Hey everyone, Leo with The Dreaming Tree and welcome to the assembly video for our Jolly Jointed Pumpkin Head. Now after the warm reception we received from our Jolly Jointed Skeleton, we decided that we wanted to bring him a few friends. Uh, so today we're putting together our uh, pumpkin head here and well, I think you're going to enjoy it. If you enjoyed putting the skeleton together, you'll find that this is pretty much on par with that. It's a very simple assembly um, and actually this is sort of a, an homage to um, something that was, uh, well, a die cut from way back in the day. And um, it's kind of playing off of that a little bit. But anyway, um, here you can see, should probably just go through the pieces. We'll start from the bottom and work our way up. Now each of the, each of the legs is gonna be made up of this white piece. Then we have a black pattern. And then we have two little overlays uh, that go on top here. So just follow along with me. It's pretty straightforward. We're going to grab the black piece first and get our glue on that. And again, this is one of those projects and I saw with the Jolly Jointed Skeleton that we got kids involved, which is wonderful because uh, this is definitely, you know, since there's not a lot of 3D stuff going on, definitely great for kids. So with this, Obviously, you want to lay this black piece right on top of the white piece. Make sure that you have as little of that white showing through as possible. Obviously, you want it showing through here, but try to match that up as accurately as you can. Okay, so we've got that, and I'm actually going to grab my, my brayer. It's going to come in very handy since we're doing a lot of paper piecing and everything is flat mostly. Okay, and then I'm going to take this layer here and that's gonna get glued right to the very bottom here. So let's flip it over, get our glue on here. Try to work that glue out to the edges. That's typically where you'll see it kinda, of, you know, try to peel off a little bit. So we want to make sure we get glue in the important spots there. And you'll notice as we're going through this, it may be a little more difficult to pick up on video, but you'll definitely see it in the photos. But I did take some time and ink various pieces. Um, I inked the bottom and top of that, as well as this entire little section here. Okay, so now this has a, a little bit of a pointy tip there. I'm gonna make sure you get glue out to the edge of that little tip as well. Okay, and for this, just want to line up the little holes there. Those are little buttons on his shoes. We may end up putting some rhinestones or some brads or something on that. Okay, so our first leg is all complete. Now, what I would suggest doing is taking these individual pieces and just putting them underneath a, a mat like this, just so that while the glue is setting, um, everything stays nice and flat. Once that glue really hardens, it tends to kind of keep things uh, in whatever position they're in. And if you have it underneath your mat, you know for a fact it's gonna be nice and flat. So it'll just look nicer and sit more flat for you overall. Okay, so with this here again, just popping it right on top, if it helps, you'll see that you have a little hole here where the brad is gonna go so that we can make it all jointed. Can use that as a reference, obviously. And then of course, just work your way around, make sure everything is sitting nice and flat. If you have a brayer like I do, definitely use it. Very helpful. Okay, moving on to the next piece. And like I said, this is essentially just a, a paper piecing project. Very simple, I think anybody can do this. This would be a great project to start with. Okay, so with this one again, we're just matching up the little holes for the buttons here. So let's do that, get that in place. This is a really cool pattern piece of paper and actually kept a sample of it, I think. Well, maybe not. Uh, it's actually, yeah, it's DCWV, uh, the Lenoir, Lenoir collection. It's the black collection. Okay. And the last piece here. So I started putting out Halloween decorations in the middle of September. 
actually, well, I guess it's kind of still in, actually it was early September and I was like, wow, am I doing this too early? But you know, um, every time we have a new product release, I lose two or three days as far as household duties go. So I'm kind of glad I started early because they never seem to have enough time these days. Got to make the time, but things get in the way sometimes and Kind of the kind of the king of Halloween around here. I gotta make sure I live up to that. Okay, so got the second foot all done here, and you can see how how uh, how nice that looks when it's all inked too. And I think I actually hit the black with a little bit of black ink just to just to darken it a little bit. Okay, so next up here is uh, we've got the thigh. We've got a left thigh and a right thigh and it's made up of two layers of black and then we have a pattern and then we have this little blue layer there which i think is like the top of a sock so let's get this in place and the other thigh will be essentially the same just mirrored okay just match it up nicely the little holes there for the brads are a great guide as well and you'll have that on pretty much every piece except for well even the main body has that as well Okay, so uh, and these these pattern pieces are not interchangeable. You'll know where it goes. Okay, so let's get our glue on there. So for those of you that are watching on YouTube, I'm curious, um, how much do you decorate? You decorate a lot, just a little, one room, every room. Do you decorate outside? Actually, I should post this question in the group so I can actually see the photos of your, your decorations. I know many of you are posting your projects, which I love to see, but I'm curious to see the whole kit and caboodle, so to speak. Okay, so now we've got this blue piece. Okay, and that's gonna go right here. Just match it up with the hole, and it kinda, it does fit a certain way here. So before you put it down, just try to match up the hole first, and then the rest of it kind of falls into place. You can see how that fits. Okay, so we'll press that down. And actually, let's, there we go. Okay, so you see that. And I am going to put that underneath my mat to let that set. And we'll do the same thing to the other side. So I was very thrilled to see how many people really took to our, our jolly jointed skeleton. This one's gonna be a lot of fun. And I think I, I read a comment today that one of our, one of our dreamers did this with um, a child, a grandson, maybe it was a son or daughter, and they had such a blast with it that they they're excited to tell them that, hey, we get to do this again with a new character. And you're not gonna find a die cut like this anywhere. I feel like even the uh, even the cool vintage ones that are just printed, uh, they're cool, but this, because of the layering, it makes it extra special. You're not gonna find that anywhere, really. Okay, so again, match this up with the little holes. Make sure everything matches up around the perimeter as well. Press that down. And again, we're gonna grab this little this little bean-like element and get that glued down. Just match it up with the hole. Okay, kind of goes at an angle a bit there. And press that down. Okay, so put that underneath our mats. And I'm going to start on the arms here. Now, I just remembered that we wanted to actually do a little bit of embossing on the yellow part, on just the hand. Now, the reason I'm not going to emboss the whole thing is because it'll glue down better if I just emboss the part that I want. So with this, here's a little tip. Um, if you want, you can literally just put just the part you want to emboss in there. And because it's just going in this way, you can feed it through and you won't have to emboss the rest of it. Okay, so it's just a little tip here. And I think this is the only part that we're 
actually embossing just to kind of give it a little more interest. Okay, let's see that. There we go. It's almost like he's got some little dotted gloves on. So I'll do the same thing on the other side. Just pop that right in there. Definitely, uh, we used, I used a lot more embossing on the haunted house that is part of this bundle. Not so much on the witch, but either way, definitely if you do not have an embossing machine, I would highly recommend it. Definitely adds so much to your projects. Okay, so we've got the arm and then we've got the upper arm. Okay, and we're gonna put those together. We're gonna start off by putting the yellow piece on the purple piece. So that's to give it two layers and also we've got a little accent thing going going on there. So let's begin by putting glue on the hand all the way up to the tips of the fingertips. Very tips of the fingertips. Get that glue off of there. Okay, work that glue around the perimeter. It's most important. Definitely want to get some glue on the inside part too, but Make sure you've got it. Okay, so match up the hole there. And the rest of it should just kind of fall into place. Make sure everything is nice and lined up. And there we go. And I'm gonna grab my little brayer, press that down. Okay, and we have the clothing portion of this. This is almost like a little, kind of like a Beetlejuice outfit, sort of. Definitely a good, Good, good film from back in the day. They, they don't make them like they used to. I think that was Michael Keaton and uh, something Davis. I forget her name. She was in a league of her own, a league of their own, one of my faves. Gina Davis, that's it. Okay, so we'll put that right on there. And you can see here that I also, I did hit this with some black ink. Kind of makes it look like you know, he's been a little messy. Probably hanging out in the pumpkin patch, scaring all the kids. And then we have this little green accent piece that's gonna go right here. You can see where the cutout is, where the purple shows through. That's exactly where you wanna place this. And there we go. Okay, just try to make sure you get it as centered as you can. And I literally hit every layer of that with a little bit of ink. Okay, so let's pop that underneath the mat, let that dry flat while we do the other hand section. Okay, we're gonna go yellow on top of purple, glue all the way up to the tips, and so this is my favorite time of the year. I believe, I believe fall starts in a day and a half, roughly. I think it's the 22nd. I thought it was tomorrow, but I don't think it is. And we already, already went to Fright Fest at Six Flags in Gurney, Illinois. I don't know if any of you have ever, if you guys go to amusement parks and ride the coasters, they, uh, they close it down for a week <clears throat> and they decorate it for Halloween with all kinds of spooky things. They have characters running around, scaring everyone. I think I'm pretty numb to that at this point. Uh, I look at it more as kind of a museum of Halloween things that I just get to kind of enjoy. And there's really no fear factor for me anymore, but <clears throat> still a big fan of seeing how it's done. I appreciate when, uh, when places do it really well as far as the decor goes. Okay, so last piece here. And let's get that on there. Just make sure you line it up as accurately as you can. Sometimes machines are not always perfectly accurate and things may not cut out perfectly flush, so do your best to get that as centered as you can to hide the layer underneath. 
Okay, so we'll put that underneath our mats. And moving up to the arm section, we've got, in my case, two layers of purple, and then we've got the clothing portion of it. Now these are, again, these are kind of mirrored, so if you grab two of these and you put them on top of each other and they don't exactly fit, it, just grab the other one. Chances are you just grabbed the wrong one. It's not a big deal. Okay, so lay those on top of each other. You got a brayer, smush it down. And then we grab the clothing portion. And let's get that glued into place. That's a pretty little pattern on the back. These little black cats, that's cool. And line up the holes. I think that's probably your best bet. And then again, just check it all the way around. Make sure everything's lining up nicely. Press that down with your brayer and pop it underneath your mat. Okay, and same thing on the other side. I know this is kind of redundant, but it's okay. Don't want to skip anything. All right. So this one's definitely got more pieces than our little skeleton, but that's just because, well, the skeletons the skeleton was uh, it was bare bones. Yep. Yep. If this uh, this crafting thing doesn't work out for me, I might have a chance in the world of comedy. We'll see. I'm not going to hold my breath though. Because if I hold my breath, I'll, I might end up like the skeleton. All right, so last section here. Pop that on, roll it down, and there you have it. Let's pop that underneath the mat. And now we can start building the actual pumpkin. Okay, so the actual face is made up of three layers. This layer here is the solid layer, backmost layer. And then we've got this layer here second layer, and then this layer here is the third layer. And as you can see, I did take some time to ink these sections here on just the front layer. I didn't do anything on the two back layers. Okay, so let's get our glue going. Now we've got a lot of surface area here to cover, so we gotta go quick. Okay, just focus on the perimeter mostly. And then of course we're gonna need to add a little bit into the little detail areas there in the center. I'm just going to go real quick like that here and do a little bit there, a little bit there. It's almost like you're signing a, a gibberish autograph. That's kind of what I'm doing right now. Okay, let's get that on there. Obviously, the little holes here are a great way to, well, great little visual cues to look at while you're lining this up. Perfect. That looks great. And get the brayer going. That was pretty straightforward, okay? And now this layer's got a few more little details here scattered about. So again, try to go quick and get that glue. If you don't get it all over the entire thing, it's not the end of the world, but try to get it in as many little spots as you can. If at the end of this, once we put it down, if we find that we have some areas lifting up, especially the loose parts here. We can always lift them up and add a little extra glue here and there, but I don't think that's gonna be necessary. I think that's perfect right there. And again, use the little holes as your little visual cues for placement. I'm starting with the one on top and then moving it over down here at the bottom to make sure that all of that lines up nicely. And then you might have to give it a little nudge here or there, depending on your initial placement. So far, so good. And that came out and turned out perfect. Now I just noticed something here. I've got this little area right here that I missed. So I'm just gonna grab a scrap piece of paper, put a little bit of glue right on the very tip of that. And we'll tuck it right underneath that section there and just kind of paint the glue onto that little piece that I missed and just press that down. That's what I like to call giving it a little TLC. Okay, so there we have it. <clears throat> now, we can start building the hat. Okay, we're gonna start off with the black part of the hat and that's gonna get glued on like so. We still have a visual cue here with this little hole. So placement should be pretty obvious. Let's get our glue on this hat portion. 
Okay. There we go. And again, use that visual cue there with the little hole. And then of course, check, check on the brim here on the left and the right to make sure that you've got it in mostly the right spot before you commit. Okay, there we go, perfect. And a little bit of orange peeking through here, but that's okay. Press that down. Now we do have uh, this little piece here, this white piece should fit like a little puzzle right into that orange space. Just go easy on the glue here, just a few little dots. And pop that right in there. Nice little contrast there, okay. All right, so before we put the feather together, we've got two little accent pieces that need to go on here. Uh, one is gonna go right here. Now before you actually put it down, maybe place it in this spot just to get an idea of where it needs to go. Uh, this section up here is a little bit rounded. This is completely flat. So just visually make sure that you get an idea of where it's going before we actually put the glue on it and pop it into place. Because this piece here, uh, because it's so skinny, it's a little flimsy. And if you don't get it in the right spot the first time because it is kind of flimsy, you might tarnish or blemish, I should say, not tarnish, your black piece of paper here. And we don't want that. Okay, so try to line that up. See, I almost did it. Just line that up as accurately as you can. And there we go, just like that. Beautiful. Almost got it. There we go. Should mostly cover that black part at the bottom. There we go, perfect. Yep, hit it right on the head. Okay, great. And then we have uh, this section here, and that's gonna go right here. Okay, it's gonna go right here where this section meets the brim. You want the bottom of this to meet at that point. Okay. So let's get our glue on the back of this piece and get that in place. And then all that leaves is our little feather. And then we can just grab our brads and start getting them all together. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the orange layer and the black's gonna go on top of that. Okay, so let's get our glue on the black piece. And work some of that glue out to the very tip of that, that little swirly element there. And let's make sure we get plenty of, uh, not too much glue, I'm just saying we should Make sure we get the glue all the way out to the little perimeters here on the feather. Okay, and let's get that glued down. Just match that up as accurately as you can. Just like that. That looks great. And there we go. Press that down. Okay. And then we're gonna put the blue layer down next. So kind of the same thing here. Getting our glue out to the very tips of some of these sections just to make sure they are nice and flat. There we go. Sometimes it's a little challenging working with flimsy pieces like this, but you got it. It's not gonna be hard. Okay, let's line that up as accurately as we can and press that down into place. There we go. And finally, we have the purple part of our little feather. And I think that these would be great at a craft fair. Um, well, for one, they're very beautiful. 
as far as the design goes, very unique, but also they can be kind of put away. Uh, well, you can store them much easier than, say, some of our 3D pieces. Uh, I mean, the the real, you know, intense collector, uh, I don't think it really matters to them much, but definitely something that will last a long time. Okay, so now we've got this uh, gold foil element, this single one here. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on that. I'm going to put a little bit too much on there, so I'm hitting it with my finger just to thin it out a little bit, and that's gonna go right there. Okay, just like that. And I need to bring that down a tad, there we go. Okay, then we have this crayfish colored element that's gonna go on next, and then we'll top that off with another gold foil element. Okay, just make sure that you got that in the right spot. And finally, our last gold foil element. And all the pieces will be together. And now comes the fun part where we get to join them all together. I was mentioning in our Facebook group that our Jolly Jack had a, a Monster Mash party in the studio and I heard a scurry and a loud bang and I had to saw all these pieces and I had to put them all together. So let's see what he looks like now. Let's get all these pieces out. Okay, got a leg, an arm. Oops, dropped one. Okay. All right, so where are we gonna start here? We can start with Let's just lay this out and make sure we've got the right thing here. I'm gonna put his arms up like this, like that. Let's find uh, this piece here. I believe this is the right piece. Yep, uh, nope. That's gotta go like this. The thicker part is gonna be up towards his body. This elbow here, it's gonna go, this is gonna go on top, okay? And this guy's gonna go here. And like that, okay. Actually, it's gonna go behind his head though, uh, but I'm just showing you for the sake of illustration. Now, you'll notice the only difference between the left and the right side here is this little cut in for the black part. Now, they want the black part to be on the outside. So that's how you know that that one goes there. That's gonna go behind as well. And then of course, we all know left and right feet. Okay, so there we go. Uh, so let's grab our brads and get to town here with putting them together. Again, the arm is gonna go behind the head. So let's get that in place. Now the holes for the size of brads that we're using are probably a little bit um, smaller, but that's okay because that's gonna give us a little bit of, uh, well, it's gonna make it kind of stay in place a little bit easier so you can really shape it, okay? Now don't forget, the, this part of the arm goes on top, not behind. So let's grab another brad and poke it through. And let's get the other one. And poke that through and spread those apart. I think you get the idea here. And that is starting to look really cool. I'm very happy with how all of our jointed characters turned out. I still have to put the witch together actually, so we'll see how that's gonna turn out, but I can already tell that that's probably gonna be the favorite of the three, I think. The artistry is pretty dang cool. If you, you know, I just realized I did. I put the arm on the bottom here, so don't do that. I don't know, I told you told you to do it a certain way, and then I go ahead and do it the wrong way. I was wondering why that was looking kind of strange. That's okay, though. I wonder how many of you were watching and said, Leo, you're doing it wrong. Well, I caught it. There we go. Cool. Okay, so again, make sure you're putting the arm, or the bottom part of the arm, on top of the main part. He's already looking pretty spooky kind of freaked out here. Okay, there we go. 
And now, again, the legs are gonna be behind the head. Okay, so let's put that in there. And just poke that right through. Okay, and then this guy's going on top. Okay, so let's get another brad through this hole and through that hole. And there we go. One more here. And then we just have to take, and I think we're gonna actually um, use a foam square for his feather to give it a little dimension. If you don't wanna use a foam square, that's fine. There's already so much going on with our little character here that I don't know if you really need to add any more dimension. You can if you want. Whoops, gotta do it this way. There we go. Flip them over. Now, of course, the little hole on the top here is what you can use to either pin it or I've got some, um, some cord here, some string. Okay, so there he is. Let me get him in full frame here for your viewing pleasure. That looks awesome. And this guy here is gonna get attached right about here. Okay, let me see, we want the feather to be kind of up a little bit. So I'd say right about there. And I am going to use some foam squares. And because I know that this is gonna be hanging up, um, I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna be shy with these because I really wanna make sure it stays in place. So now there comes a point here where you don't wanna go up too high. Okay, so right about, right about there's where you wanna stop. And then we can also bring some over here. So I'm gonna put one right about there to hold that in place. Okay, so let's take the backings off of this and do the big reveal here. There we go. And again, it's going off to the side a little bit. And let's see here, this guy should be sticking off right about, I'm gonna go with, not there. Well, we can't cover up the hole. Well, actually we can, doesn't matter. There we go, that's good. Awesome, look at that, very cool. Let's take a look at it from this angle. Yep, we got ourselves a winner here. So that is it for our Jolly Jointed pumpkin head. I thought it came out really cool. And you can see here on the back, you've got your little hole there. You can thread the string through there and that's it. So he is going to join my little skeleton up there and uh, take a look at the final photo. Um, I've got a few little um, pearls and rhinestones here. Uh, of course, you've got two little holes here where you can add um, some rhinestones or some pearls to make these, uh, I probably would make them black or purple. And then I'm gonna add some black here just to make his eyes a little bit more pronounced. Uh, but I think that's gonna be it as far as embellishments go. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the project. If you did, please take a moment and visit us on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell so that you get notifications anytime we release a new project, whether it be paid or free. You can see we've got 41,000 now. I appreciate every single one of you. And uh, if you make this or anything from our new bundle, I would love to see it, so head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Group where you can join myself and the over 32,000 other dreamers that inspire us daily. So happy almost fall, happy Halloween, and as always, I look forward to crafting with you again. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos, and also please consider hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where we have over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly videos. I look forward to crafting with you soon.